Good morning and welcome to City Council Chambers. My name is Nora Negron. I'm the Public Information Manager for the City of Laredo, and I'll be your MC for this press conference this morning. Before we start, I want to present uh, those important officials that are with us this morning. First and foremost, your Mayor of the City of Laredo, the Honorable Dr. Victor D. Trevino. Also with us, representing Presidenta Municipal de Nuevo Laredo, is the Chief of National Affairs, Mr. Arturo Ortega. Representing the Nuevo Leon government, we also have Deborah Karen. Representing the Webb County Sheriff, the Honorable Martin Cuellar, we have Assistant Chief Julio Gonzalez and Chief Alejandro Gutierrez. Representing, uh, not representing, he is the Mexican Consulate General in Laredo, Ambassador Juan Carlos Mendoza. Our city manager, Mr. Joseph Neff. And our police department chief, Chief Miguel Rodriguez. The city of Laredo is joined today by local law enforcement agencies, as you can see, to discuss the recent Supreme Court ruling on the Texas immigration law as before that happened yesterday. Um, but late last night, the fifth court, court of appeals blocked us before once again. So meanwhile, the city of Laredo mayor and law enforcement agencies wanted to discuss what would happen if this law, of course, takes effect. So please help me welcome the mayor of the city of Laredo, Dr. Victor Trevino. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Dr. Victor Trevino, mayor for the city of Laredo. I would like to start off by saying that I'm, a, I'm proud to live here in Laredo and be the mayor of this great Texas border community. And as Laredoans, only we know what it truly means to live and work at the border. I wanted to give an update on the Texas State Senate Bill 4 and the city's position when it comes to our community. Once again, the law is currently blocked as of last night by the Fifth Circuit Court, and whether the law is constitutional or not, Laredo will continue to follow its formula and having a strong collaboration with state, federal, and binational law enforcement, which have maintained Laredo one of the safest cities in the country. This stability has also maintained Laredo as the number one port of entry in the country and all of this without the need of a border wall. Because you can't have commercial prosperity without border security. And make no mistake, Laredo will be going through some tough challenges as it relate to who we are as a people, as a community, and as Americans. However, as Laredoans, we are the only ones that get to define who we are and we need to stay on the on course and not get caught in the current political dysfunction that we're seeing throughout the country. There's no dispute that we're a country of laws and there has been frustration with our outdated immigration system for decades. With that being said, there has been a great concern with the uncertainty of Texas Senate Bill 4 and what impact we will have on the border and Hispanic communities throughout Texas. As I stand here, I want to dissuade rumors and misinformation and reaffirm that the exception of men and women at the Laredo Police Department and our community's law enforcement agencies will continue to do the excellent job that they have always done and never engage in any racial profiling or conduct unauthorized with unauthorized raids to our community. The police department will continue to work collaboratively with all state and federal law enforcement agencies, including continuing to work with Customs and Border Patrol, who are the subject matter experts in federal immigration. This is the Laredo formula, and this is the reason why Laredo continues to be one of the safest cities in the country. And one of the statements from the South Texas Alliance, which includes border mayors and San Antonio and Laredo, is the discussion we have had about the SB4 and the impacts 
and the concerns. And we all agree on a mutual statement that addresses this. As member of the South Texas Alliance of Cities, we're disappointed that the Supreme Court did not take this, this case and it remanded back to the, the circuit courts. But these are things that have to be done. And one of the good things that the circuit court put a stay on the lawn for now, but that does not guarantee that it will move on forward or the stay will continue. So instead of uh, creating further confusion and chaos, the law will add the necessary burdens that we know from local police departments. And every day that the law is in effect, this takes away from the police department and local law enforcement agencies to do their work. Our region faces many complex issues and require real solutions. So SB4 distracts from efforts to work on bipartisan solutions, such as bipartisan border bill, which will provide communities with resources to address challenges in a compassionate, legal, and humane manner. At this point, I will pass the speak, uh, mic to another speaker, but thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I also want to acknowledge that our council member for District 3, Melissa Fierro, is here with us this morning. Um, after the mayor, we want to talk a little bit more about enforcement, of course. So please help me welcome uh, the chief of the Liberty Police Department, Chief Miguel Rodriguez. But we also wanted to ask all law enforcement agencies that are here present to also come up here um, and join him in the podium, please. Good morning. Um, a lot of the uh, the conversations uh, that uh, have been going around about this law uh, has been uh, for quite a while. Uh, we've had uh, several conversations with uh, our uh, state partners, who pretty much know exactly what we're going to be doing with this with this uh, with this law. And I can tell you that it's uh, it's always been good conversations uh, because a lot of the fear that's out in the community uh, shouldn't be out there. Uh, especially here in Laredo, because I can tell you that this law is not about us going out there and doing robberies. This law is not about us going out there and asking for papers and immigration status. This is not about that. This law is, is very clear that whenever we can apply it is through a lawful detention or an arrest. And, and let me be very clear that this is the reason why We've, uh, we've already talked to our, our local partners and making sure that we standardize our training, that we're not doing things differently, that we make sure that when we're training our officers is the same training that our deputy uh, sheriffs are getting trained at, that our constables are getting trained at. So very important that we train and train and train because we want to avoid the racial profiling part of this law, that it, 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 it lends itself for that. But again, Racial profiling, it, it, it's a law that is not only a violation in Texas, it's a, it's a violation in the entire United States. We cannot, we cannot do that. It is very important that we don't do that. So very important that we continue to focus on training and we already have the curriculum at PD. We've already shared that curriculum with the Sheriff's Department and we are already ready to train our officer on this uh, new law. Um, with that being said, you know, uh, last night I got a call uh, from a friend and asked, hey, my mom is here on a traveling visa. It's not here on a working visa. Am I gonna get stopped? Again, I don't even know the difference, right? Uh, we're not immigration officers. We need to understand that. And our officers need to understand that, that we need that training because there's a lot of things that happen through an immigration status that we as officers have never dealt with. And again, it is, for us, it is very easy to apply this law because we already have the mechanism in place. And I'll give you an example. Somebody gets stopped for a DWI, person does not have, is not here illegally, what happens? We arrest them, we take them to jail, the sheriff's department finds out that the person is not from here, what do they do? They call customs, they call border patrol. They put a detainer, the person gets deported. The person who does something here, which is an offending status, either gets arrested, if he's not here legally, what happens? They, the courts decide he's gonna stay here to, to face prosecution, or he's gonna be deported. The mechanism here in Laredo is already in place. So are things gonna change? No, 
The only difference is now it gives it the authority to make sure that if you're here illegally, it gives it the authority to add that that charge to you if we need to to, to add it. We had conversations with our, with our district attorney. Our district attorney made it very clear for us that it is an enhanced charge to, to what we're, we're dealing with. It has to be a, a, a state charge that already is in existence. Now we're gonna be able to add it with the yes before charge. So unless you're crossing the river and we see that as a crime in progress, then we can apply it right away. That's basically how it is. Um, so uh, the other thing that we, we wanna to touch base on uh, is on the victims of crimes. We need to be very clear that if you're a victim of a crime and you're not here legally, it does not matter. This law does not apply to you. There's laws that protect victims of crimes and we need to make sure that we continue that conversation and keep on creating that awareness to our media partners that it does not apply to them. We do not want our community to stop reporting based on the fact that they think or they believe or they fear of being deported when that's not gonna happen. So we've talked to the Sheriff's Department, we've talked to, to our, our partners in the Constable's Office, making sure that we continue advising and creating that awareness to our victims uh, because we've been doing great at uh, providing that assistance to our victims and being able for our victims of domestic violence and things of that nature to report, 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 and we don't want it to stop because of this. So again, to our media partners, we need that help because we need to make sure that we continue the conversation about this and making sure that our victims continue reporting. Um, community policing, our focus, again, community policing is very important to us and we need to make sure that we continue uh, focusing on community policing. We want the community to believe and to trust our police department and we don't want this law to say other words. So we gotta continue the conversation and making sure that we bring that awareness as well. Um, the last thing that I do want to say, and, and about this law, we're still going to wait for the courts. They're still in, in arguments. I believe they're in arguments as, as we speak. Um, this SB4 law did bring some, some good things, and I'll tell you what I mean about that. It brought enhancements. We continue seeing the, uh, the, those uh, very, very dangerous pursuits around our city on, on people that are taking advantage of, of smuggling uh, persons. And now this law brings enhancements. And what do I mean by that? If the person ends up being in, in a crash and, and either causes serious bodily injury or death, it brings it up to a felony one and up to two years in prison. In prison. It, it also enhances on stash houses. So now if anybody's operating a stash house, it brings it up to a felony three and a felony one, depending on the circumstances. So those are very good enhancements that we can use to make sure that we prevent these individuals from monetizing on individuals from any, any other part of the world. So again, it does bring some good things, but we need to make sure that we wait for the court to make sure that whatever it is that they decide on, we're gonna be able to apply it and we're gonna apply it with everything also the fourth amendment in mind and making sure that we don't violate anybody's rights while we apply this law. So very important that we communicate and we continue to communicate with our partners and making sure that this is done correctly. And again, a lot of conversation, a lot of uh, awareness to our community to not to not worry about this. We continue, and like I always say, business as usual, and we continue to enforce the laws of our great state because there are laws, but at the end of the day, again, I repeat myself, there's already a mechanism that does what this law was supposed to be, uh, is supposed to be doing, which is deporting the people that are here legally when they cause a crime or they're detained lawfully. You guys want to add anything? Okay. Again, I appreciate uh, you coming in this morning and we thank you, Mayor, thank you for bringing this up. I know it's a very important issue. Uh, and our councilman who's always very, very supportive of us. Our management team is always you know, in contact with us and supporting 100% what we're doing on a daily basis. Thank you all for that, and thank you all for being here with us this morning. Thank you all. This press conference has ended, and the mayor and other law enforcement agencies that are in this room are available for our media um, if they would like any other additional interviews. Thank you so much.